Welcome back to Viewpoint. Tonight we're exploring what it means to live with dementia. Family members have told us how dementia has brought about deterioration in their loved one's speech, memory, thinking, behaviour and their ability to perform everyday tasks. With the help of the Gibraltar Alzheimer's and Dementia Society, we're seeing the impact dementia can have not only on the individual but also on their families. Thank you to our interviewees for speaking to us so candidly and giving us a real insight into their difficulties as well as the extent of the loving care that they give at home. The, the, the dementia my dad has is, is very rare, so nobody in Gibraltar has it. And it's very, very hard because you can't communicate with him. It's very hard and, and at time, at, at days goes by, it's, it's worse. And um, it's the uncertainty of what's to come because it will get worse. And that is very, very sad. He only has one grandson. I told my son, um, obviously, five years ago, and he didn't understand it at the time. How old was he? He was uh, nine years old. He didn't understand. And, in fact, the other day he asked me if, if, if his grandfather um, always spoke like that, but he cannot remember the way he used to speak before. And that was very, very hard and that was very heartbreaking to him. They spend a lot of time, my cousins and, and my auntie, and I cannot begin to imagine what it's like uh, to be with him all the time. I spend a while with him and he needs a lot of attention, um, so I can imagine that being at home with him 24-7 must be hard, uh, but they do very well. How much help do you get at the moment from the GHA? Um, and? Could they do something to make your lives easier? They don't receive any help from, from the GHA, but I think at the moment they manage um, quite well um, between b both daughters and, and uh, my auntie. Um, his doctor always told me if, if anything, anything we are worried, anything um, um, other, other than his speech changes, um, we have to contact him straight away. That, that obviously he has a very lovely um, speech therapist. It's a pity it, it's, it's not going on now because of the COVID, but um, it's something that um, the GHA has to look up at and, and, and try and, and help um, um, more, more people with, with dementia because it's a very, very hard and, and not for, for and, and not for the patient, but for the people around them. It's very, very, very hard. Uh, from the perspective of GADS, how important is it to be able to live at home? It is extremely important. I mean, change is the worst thing that can happen to anybody living with dementia. So we do encourage and with the right support that people live for as long as possible at home. It is very difficult, a lot of weight on my shoulders because everything has been brought down to me. Like I said, I work full time as well. I work in a school and um, obviously she has medical appointments, which I have to keep asking permission in school to leave the premises to attend her, her appointments, which obviously I've got a head teacher, deputy head teacher, which are lovely people, very understandable. So is the department of education or anything regarding with my mom, I go, I've, I'm covered in house and um, which I appreciate a lot, but uh, yes, I, if I would have had some help, that would have relieved a lot of pressure from me and a lot of stress. But it is what it is and we just get on with it and we've got used to what it is. So you are her main carer, but how important is the help of your husband and your children? Um, yes, I am her main carer. Very important because if it wouldn't be for my husband and my children, I don't think I would be able to do this, obviously, because I work full time and very very important because they take it in turns to help me like now she's admitted into hospital um, every day or one of my daughters will go and feed my mom or my husband will go and feed my mom i finish work i go to hospital our home is the same when it's time to wash her in the evening one of my children will help me even my husband will come and help obviously when we have to shower her everything because she does need about three carers at a time to wash her get her out of the shower get her ready to get her to bed 
So their help is very important to me. If I wouldn't have them, I don't know what I would do. And the same thing happened this summer with the beach, obviously. We have not been able to go to the beach, because obviously my children are all young. I'm not going to tell them, stay at home looking after your grandmother while I go to the beach. So obviously we've stayed at home looking after her. And my children are the ones, obviously, they have to live their life. It is, it is taxing because I work full time and obviously sometimes Ivan needs a lot of help. So he keeps us on our toes all the time. It's, I would like to say, but it's like having a small child, no? You, you need more care and as the illness progresses, obviously, you need more and more dedication. Um, I do this because it's something which comes from the bottom of my heart and I, I don't sleep well. Um, it's, it's like when you have a small child, no? that you can no longer sleep for eight hours or ten hours in one go. But um, How understanding has your employer been? Working for government, I've, um, I've managed to, to combine both my things. Uh, I've always tried to be very flexible as, work, as well with work. Um, I've always um, offered to work from, from hospital if I've been there or put in extra hours. I use up all my annual leave to cover any time he's, he's not feeling well. So until now, thankfully, I've been able to manage. Is your hope that Ivan can remain at home with you for as long as possible? Yes, I'd, um, my aim is for him to be at home all the time. Like I said, change is the worst thing that can happen to a person with dementia. We also think that early diagnosis is the best thing as well. The sooner that you are diagnosed with dementia, not only does the person, in many ways it is like a relief, you now know what you have, it is not nice to know that you have dementia, but then on the other hand, you're able to plan your years ahead. People around you know what you have, families know what you have, uh, people will treat you with more respect and uh, it's, it's the easier way. And, and it's true, we do, we've, we've, we've heard the experience from Jennifer. She has, well, she's lived with Ivan, I think she said it was 30 years that they've been, I don't remember, but uh, 30 years that they've been married. And in Ivan's case, he is early onset dementia. Mm. It, his mother also had early onset. And it shows how difficult as well it is that for somebody who's young, who's got dementia, it's also very difficult because I think that at the very early stage, at the very early, even the professionals found it difficult to diagnose that it was dementia. Mm. And I think in, in Jennifer's case, she really moved a lot, you know, in trying to come to, to find out exactly what was happening to him. Mm -hmm. But um, from what you're asking me, I would say as well that from what we have, we do have the day center, we have the residentials, we have home, home help, but it's all really geared up to the older generation. I don't think that likewise we have anything for younger people in Gibraltar. And it's more like um, it is happening. We are seeing younger people being diagnosed and affected by the, the condition. And we should, I suppose, everybody should be working together into find, finding best ways of how, you know, when somebody is young, how we can help that person and maybe just, you know, accompany the person. And it's not mean caring for the person, but being able to be with that person to make, you know, him or he or she uh, give them the best quality of life, really. And you'll have developed coping mechanisms, techniques that make the care that you give at home easier? I've, I've always been very squeamish and I think that when you find yourself in this kind of situation that uh, something happens and you, you lose all, all of that and um, basically I've always wanted to learn, I mean I think when you love a person there are no boundaries to what you want to do for that person and in my case um, I've tried everything so whatever I even needed, if he needed to, for his nappy to be changed I've done it. I've learned how to do a bed with a person inside the bed, which is not easy when you don't know to once you know. It's very simple procedure to do, but there are things which, um, until you actually need to do them, you, you don't even know can be done in that, uh, that way, you know? It's um, shaving, for example, as well. 
I used to put an alarm to remember when I needed to shave him because he needed to be shaved every day. It's not something I'm not used to, so I took on things he would normally do and we just sort of, we were a, a team together. What's the significance of her baby to her? Um, she thinks obviously it's me when I was a baby. She keeps calling her Nancy and this is my little girl. And so her baby for her, it's like when she had me as a newborn. Obviously most of, well, all my life, she's, I'm, I've been the one who's been closest to her with my brother and my dad. So it's always been me, like me and my children. So it's the name that's always stuck in her head. It's obviously my name. So she will call everybody by Nancy. To her now, it could be a man, a woman, anybody, it will be Nancy. But she thinks she's putting her to sleep, she gives her cuddles, she will kiss her goodnight, she will cover her with the blanket if it's too cold, and she will take the blanket off if she feels it gets too hot. So yes, it does comfort her a lot. My daughter works at Ocean Views, she works with patients with Alzheimer's and dementia. Obviously she can see the, the extent to where my mom's Alzheimer's and dementia to her patients. Obviously she doesn't share information, that's very confidentiality, but she still says to me, mom, this patient's not as bad as mama, and you need to make a decision. This is not a care home. This is our home. Obviously, you're trying to turn this house into a care home when the day will come, where obviously we cannot provide for her. Like now, when she's got a plaster on, we have no hoist, we don't have a walk-in shower. So obviously, we cannot care for her. But once she starts walking again, she will come back to the comfort of her home with us. Although the challenge starts with getting a diagnosis, once an individual has one, he or she and their family can start making sense of their changing world. They can start to make care arrangements and indeed plans to hand over decision making in good time. Do you think that it still carries a bit of a stigma in Gibraltar that some people are a bit ashamed about it? I think there are still people that can feel ashamed of, of, of of that word, definitely. In the case of, of my father, um, um, what I knew about dementia was memory loss. You get it in old age. My dad got it with, was diagnosed with 61, and, and his, he knows everybody. The things that he doesn't know, his, their names. Basically what we want to say is not to, to um, judge a person just because they've been given the, uh, a diagnosis and you know they have dementia. Every, every case is different. In his case, um, he cannot communicate verbally, but when he sees you, he's still as happy as he, he's always been. And um, when you see him, say hello to him. He recognizes you, it makes him happy that you recognize him and you remember him. Um, don't pull away or, or pretend you haven't seen him thinking, oh, he's not going to remember, he's not going to know. In his case, he does know who you are and he wants to say hello and um, you can even tell him about something that you remember from the past and you'll see him smile. He won't be able to, to respond um, because he cannot find the word, his vocabulary is not there, so he cannot find the words to answer. Um, in fact, he only says just a few words, um, but he, do, he, he more or less understands what, what you've said and definitely say hello to him when you see him. He still has quality of life, no? Yes, he still. He goes every morning, he wakes up really early in the morning, he goes cycling, then he starts walking, then he will get his car, then he will come, have lunch, walk again. He's always up and about. He likes uh, as well going um, for shushu in, in, in town as well. He loves it. Never forgets that day, no? Never forgets, <laughs> never forgets. How important would you say it is to, to have that conversation and to, and to talk about dementia? Very important. Um, sometimes people tend to forget because a family care, family member is taking care of that person, they forget about you. I don't receive any help or any phone calls. How are you coping? Do you need to talk to somebody? How are you doing? It's all about, yes, the, my mom obviously she's well taken care of, she's got medical appointments, she goes to Bella Vista, but for the carer, there's nothing in place. And I feel that more and more people are suffering from dementia Alzheimer's and this needs to, and awareness needs to be risen and talked about for some point in your life. Either us or a family member, we will be struck by this horrible disease. I think a lot of our viewers will be thinking that you're an extremely devoted 
uh, wife and carer. Um, so they might be interested to learn that today is actually your wedding anniversary. Yes, <laughs> we've been married for 31 years, yes. So it's a very special day and um, it was very emotional knowing that we were going to do this today because obviously it means a lot to me. You stayed remarkably calm and um, matter of fact throughout the interview but um, you told us about quite extraordinary lengths to which you have gone to make sure that Ivan can continue to live at home with you and receive the care that he needs there. You know, are you putting on a brave face or are you some sort of superwoman? Or? <laughs> no, I've got my moments. I mean, um, I get very upset when he's not well. The minute he's, he's better, it sort of gives me strength. But it's, I think that basically you have to take each day as it comes and um, I've been very lucky that whenever I've had a situation, you, being in Gibraltar, you always ask. I've, I've had to ask around because obviously things have not been easy, but um, I've been very lucky that um, I've been able to manage to sort out whatever we needed. And um, I feel that we, we have the best life we could possibly have given the situation. Viewpoint has spent some time with some amazing families living with dementia totally devoted to the care of their loved ones. But the pressure on smaller family units will be greater, and sadly, some older people won't have anyone to care for them at home. Um, in all fairness, I may say, I've had no problems with them. Um, social workers, have, obviously, their carer, um, sorry, the social worker attached to her. She's been very helpful, she's tried to help. The only thing is, government does not provide enough hours for service uses. It's like they give you two hours and that's what you get. And um, I think in that sense, government could do more with helping carers like myself, I'm assuming there's more that like me, who looks after the parents or the wives or the husbands and maybe get more care at home. Obviously you're not gonna expect a care of 24 seven, but at least a few more hours and give the family a break. And especially weekends, because weekends will come and they might give you two hours on a Saturday or four hours on a Sunday, obviously, and you think, well, for two hours, where am I going to go? It takes me more time to get her ready. Because obviously, I'm very overprotective with her. I like to shower her, I give her medication, I leave her ready with the carer. So by the time the carer comes here, obviously, everything's been done. And for me, two hours, it's pointless of having somebody sat in my house when I'm already doing that with her. So I think that, yes, maybe government should consider uh, maybe giving more hours for people who are at home and families who are caring for those people at home. Other than that, I am very grateful to Bella Vista. She goes from Monday to Friday um, from 9 to 4. And she's very well taken care of her. The staff over there are lovely. They, they're really nice people, very caring towards all the patients, not only my mom. And when she uses the respite, the same lovely people. And she's in her environment. So she gets to know the nurses, they know her, and people around her with the same condition as her. So yes. The Dementia Day Center is one of the biggest ticks in the box, I would say. It's not only helping people that have been diagnosed with, with dementia, but the massive help that it gives to the families and carers who actually have that respite whilst their loved ones uh, spend the day at the day centre. I mean, you've spoken there about taking one day at a time, but do you, do you ever stop and think about the future, like a year ahead, five years ahead, anything like that? Yes, I do. It's, it's, it's sometimes I think what will happen um, in, in a year's time, in, in, in five years' time. It, it, it's, it's, it's always in my mind. Every morning when I wake up, I, I think about that. And I worry? I worry a lot. I worry a lot for, my, for him, for my mother, because um, she's, um, she needed counselling to cope with this because it's been very hard for her. They've been many years together and, and, and it's been very hard for her to deal with this. I was 17, he was 18. We met in Main Street. 
I've been with him in December 47 years, 45 married. I wouldn't change anything in my life. Even with all our ups and downs, con este medical history ahora, pero as the, as the thing goes, it's for better for worse. He's the love of my life and he will, ever, he will always be the love of my life. In Venmo, we can see a lot of the beautiful things that he's created. Yeah. He's always done that sort of thing? He's always done that. He's been very creative. He's helped a lot of people. He's always been a helper. He's still a helper, although people think that because he's ill, he's not, but he still is. Still very independent? Yes, yes, of course. He goes walking, bicycle, car, swimming, snorkeling, gets octopuses, helps. Every boy that in the beach around us goes with him when he goes swimming. So what can I say? He's the best. And that's why you've got to make the most of today with, with people with dementia, especially because you don't know what they're going to be like tomorrow. So make sure that today you do, you spend as much time as you can with them and, and because that's what counts. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or, or it's definitely not the year after. If there's anything that the authorities could do to help people living with dementia to make it a little bit easier for them, what, what would you suggest? I think that I mean they should have some sort of like um, a handbook, or so to speak, that there must be. So, there are so many people going through the same problems that there should be like a, a one-shop uh, place where you could sort of get information and not have to go from one place to another, um, especially at, right at the beginning when you have all these different problems um, emerging. You, you're adapting to a very difficult situation because your loved one is changing and you, sometimes you, even yourself, you don't understand what's happening, uh, why all these changes. Uh, in Ivan's case, everything was very, very quick. And um, I think that they should try to have sort of um, uh, a place where people can sort of find uh, whatever information they require and make things easier. I mean, like uh, when Ivan started, the hillsides and um, all of these things were, weren't available. So obviously things have moved on. Um, these past eight years, there's been a very big improvement. There's still room for improvement, but I feel that there's a lot been done, especially by Daphne, you know, that she's, she's been great. She's, she's the one who's always uh, at the forefront of trying to better everything for uh, Alzheimer's and dementia patients and um, I think that uh, we should all try to pitch in and help as much as we can because um, these these patients, these relatives, they they need a lot of care, a lot of help and given the right sort of help, um, even for the family as well, they, they need support. I find myself very very lonely at times no? because it's it's difficult, it's, it's, it's something which when it happens to you it changes your life and sometimes you you can take it on board easily some days and then other days it's it's more difficult for you to to combine in my case i combine my my full-time job with my husband's illness and at times um, it's it is difficult i would say it's obviously not having the facilities and obviously it's very hard she doesn't know who we are and she thinks we are strangers so obviously sometimes there's days we can convince her it's family there's days we can't so she can get aggressive and abusive and it's like very hard because you want to help her but she can't she won't let you help you because of her condition so it is very hard how you feel all over the place emotional sad Very sad, obviously, seeing her every day. Her condition is worsening. She's not getting any better. She won't get any better. 
very heartbreaking. Obviously, I saw my life with my mom. She's not my mom anymore. She's not here anymore. My mom's well gone now. Supported the success. She's not here. So yes, very hard, very heartbreaking. You have been living with dementia in the family for some years now. What would you say to somebody who has recently been diagnosed or whose loved one has recently been diagnosed? I would tell them to take a day at a time, to be strong, be positive, because it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy. And, and, and never to be ashamed of dementia, of the word dementia. I made a promise to my dad and that is that I would do everything possible to find out and to try and help others and to avoid what happened to him, what happened to our family, that there would be a repetition to that. I know we haven't been able to change everything, but I would say that since then to now, you know, many good things have happened. Um, lots of patience, give them lots of love, caring, make them feel safe because they are very lost. They don't know where they are, they don't know what's happening to them. One moment they remember things, the next moment they don't know again where they are. So they are very confused, very lost. It can be very frustrating for them, obviously. So lots of love and caring and makes lots of memories with them because the day will come when they will not remember any of them. Um, I, I always um say that there is life with, with Alzheimer's and from the way I try to deal with the situation is that I always look, try to find uh, something good from something which is not very good because obviously you can't be crying all day and um, I try to be very positive and if people need help they should come forward because there are, the, you might think it's only you but there are many other people in the same situation as you are and sometimes simple things, I mean I always remember Daphne, um, she talked to me right at the beginning and for me it was very comforting um, because you can relate to other people and sometimes just by having a chat with someone it might um, take away many of the fears you might have. Um, it's, it's very daunting at the beginning, um, you need to accept it and once you start learning um, a bit about Alzheimer's then obviously you start dealing with the situation, not everybody's the same. And um, I think that the worst thing is for you to feel very lonely and by yourself. Um, I would say that life doesn't end when dementia begins. And going back again, although I'm repeating, it's early diagnosis is so important because you've just said, you know, it's beautiful love stories to see how people go beyond of what they do for the loved ones, it's just amazing, you know, you, there would be no care in the world would, would give as much as what they do. But likewise, I think that they also need the opportunity of being supported by the social and care system as well. It is very important that if they have the right support, definitely you will see in those cases that they will enjoy that not everything is negative about, about dementia. Tonight's episode is the first of two in-depth reports on Viewpoint. Living with dementia continues at the same time next week. Covid may have shown that it's possible for many from different walks in our society to get together to tackle a health crisis. Campaigners for people with dementia complain that there's always an issue more urgent than theirs. Dementia is a health emergency and in the coming months it will need policymakers to spend more time on it. The solutions to dementia, like the disease itself, could take decades to unfold. And that's a good reason to start working on them now. Good night. <laughs>